Hi, my name is Gad and I'm a postdoctoral fellow in the lab of Professor Uli Schible in Geneva. We are studying the circadian rhythm and molecular mechanism of circadian oscillators. During this short video, I would like to introduce you into the world of circadian rhythm and entrainment of peripheral clocks. It is evident from our daily life that during the day there are the changes in our physiology and behavior. Whether this manifests itself by changes in our rest activity or even in the function of internal organs such as the heart, the liver and the kidney. These changes in our physiology and behavior are in fact governed by a central pacemaker which is located in the suprachiasmatic nucleus in the brain. The central pacemaker in the brain is not such an accurate clock and like in any other clock it must be readjusted. So the central pacemaker is readjusted by light and dark cycles in order to be in resonance with the geophysical time. Surprisingly there is not only one clock in our body, there are several clocks. Every organ in our body contains a clock. Furthermore, every single cell in our body has a clock. In order that this clock would function appropriately, they should all be synchronized and be in a similar phase. This raises the question, how does the central pacemaker in the brain synchronize the peripheral clocks in the different organs? It's clear that there are probably different pathways that are responsible for the communication between the master clock and the periphery. Probably some of these pathways are redundant. While for the master clock, the light and dark cycles are the main synchronization cue, for the peripheral clock, feeding serves as a strong synchronization cue. This was shown by the following experiment. Mice are nocturnal animals, they mostly ingest food during the night, during the dark phase. If you now provide the mice with food exclusively during the day, the central pacemaker in the brain remain in phase with the light and dark, while the phase of the peripheral clocks is completely inverted upon changing in the feeding regimen. This points out that feeding plays an important role in the synchronization of the peripheral clocks. So in general, we can divide the pathways that connect the central pacemaker and the periphery into two. One is direct pathway from the central pacemaker to the periphery, which function via hormones or signaling peptides, and the other is indirect pathway from the central pacemaker to the periphery, which function via feeding. The central pacemaker in the brain drives cyclic feeding behavior, which in turn synchronizes the peripheral clock. One way to distinguish between the direct and indirect pathways is by performing food shifting kinetic analysis inverting the mice from night day feeding to day fed feeding and then measuring the adaptation of the peripheral clocks. If a component is participating in the direct pathway, one would expect that in its absence, the peripheral clock would adapt faster. As a proof of principle, this was shown with respect to the glucocorticoid receptor. Knockout mice for the glucocorticoid receptors indeed adapt faster to changes in feeding regimen. On the other hand, if a component is participating in the indirect pathway, communicating between feeding and the peripheral clock is absent, one would expect that the adaptation to the new feeding regimen will be slower. NAD and NADH represent the cellular metabolic state, and there is accumulating evidence that NAD and NADH participate in the function of the oscillator. This encourages us to test whether other NAD-dependent transcription regulators also participate in the function of the clock. Therefore, we decided to check whether PARP1, poly ADP ribose polymerase 1, participate in the function of the oscillator. PARP1 was reported to poly ADP ribose several transcription factors and histone modifying their activity. First, we tested PARP1 protein levels and PARP1 activity during the day. Whereas PARP1 protein levels were constant during the day, 
PAF1 activity was oscillating with maximal activity during the light phase. This activity was independent of the clock since when we checked the PAF activity in mice with conditionally inactive liver clock, the pattern of activity remained the same. However, when we inverted the feeding from night fed to day fed, we found out that PAP activity was completely inverted, suggesting that PAP activity is regulated in fact by feeding. Later on we identified that PAP1 binds clock bimal and modify clock. PAP1 poly ADP ribosylates clock and by that affecting both the DNA binding activity of clock and the transcription regulation. More importantly, when we examine the adaptation of PARP1 knockout mice to changes in feeding, we found out that when we change the feeding from night fed to day fed regimen, PARP1 knockout mice adapt much slower to the new feeding regimen. This points out that PARP1 participate in the pathway communicating between feeding and the peripheral clocks.